Hi, this is Boki, and today for Not My Thesis, I want to talk about the March for Science. The March for Science is a march that will be taking place on April 22nd, so it's coming up pretty soon. And it's for people who are interested in kind of protecting the state of science in this country. It's important to stress this is a, not a march for scientists, it is a march for science. So it is open to everyone. While I'm about to talk a lot about my feelings as a scientist, please know that this is not exclusive to scientists, that if anything we really want, we really want and need this support of other people to make sure that you know science is able to thrive in this country so that we can do things like build great technology have great uh, medical care ha um, that we can you know find cures for diseases or uh, make sure that our country doesn't fall apart due to climate change um, be able to do all sorts of things that are important to everyone so I would make the whole case about why science is important I think there are a lot of people who are doing that I want to focus for me personally both kind of as a citizen, as a first generation American, and as a scientist, why I'm marching. Because I think these two things are really at the core of why I am planning to participate in this march. And there is a lot of controversy about this march, whether or not it's going to make science political. Sometimes the leadership of it has lacked, ref, reflected a lack of diversity in it. And I think there's a lot of really important conversations there that I hope we all kind of carry forward. I will say that I think the question of it becoming political for me is a moot point because for me, the same things that make me want to be a scientist are the same things that kind of guide my values when it comes to politics. So for me, they're connected. For this video, I am just going to focus on me. It's going to be super self-centered. It's just going to be about my experience because I just want to kind of talk about what science means to me and the ways that I, I have been kind of increasingly terrified over the past few months about where it's going to be in the future. So there are two big things. Um, the first one is the travel ban and just kind of the rhetoric about immigration in general. There is a lot of awareness within the scientific community about how this affects us as a group, but not being open to people from other countries affects our ability to act as scientists. For me, it's deeply personal because my parents came to the US to do science. They came to the US before I was born because they wanted to be able to do science here. As far as I know, they had a pretty good situation in India. They were able to do science there. They moved to England to do uh, some, some research, but after that, they wanted to come to the US and they wanted to come because of the science. The science is really central, I think, to the appeal of America. It's being able to have access to like amazing people, amazing facilities, amazing support from your government. All of these things are really linked together, I think, in why my family came to the US. When, when we talk about the American dream, the American dream has never looked like a white picket fence for me. It has looked like beakers and shakers and cells and chemicals that are all being thrown together. It looks like a mass spectrometer. It, like, this is what the American dream has been to my family. It's being able to do good science. It's being able to do it with support, with financial support from your government to be able to make sure that you can advance it. I, I don't think I can stress enough how much to me immigration and science are so linked together. It's immigration within the context of my family. It's also immigration in the context of the people that we knew and grew up, that I grew up with. So many of my, our family friends are also people who came here as immigrants to do science in the US. My my family is not from a country that is affected by the travel ban. We are also not Muslim, so we are not clearly targets of these policies. At the same time, the rhetoric that is being used is pretty generally about brown people to me. I'm, I was born in this country, I was raised in this country, I'm American, and for me, being American has always been closely related with being a scientist, no matter what I end up doing. And it's just, that's just part of my identity as I've kind of figured out my balance of growing up with an Indian family in an American world. My experience as a scientist is incredibly linked together with having parents who are immigrants to this country. They came here to do science. America stood out to them because of science. And so now that we have this president who is trying to limit, who clearly is fanning a base with deep hatred against immigrants, it's just like, I don't know if I, were, if I were my parents now how I would feel about making that kind of decision. The second thing, the more you know, clear, tangible thing that's not just about big ideas about how I fit, fit in this country as a first generation American, but this, this other thing is money. Trump has basically proposed a budget that cuts a lot of money, uh, a lot of funding for agencies that fund scientific research. If you're not really familiar with how 
people like my advisor and people like me get paid to do research, a lot of it comes from the government. Uh, basically what will happen is that uh, people like my advisor will propose big projects. They'll say, I want to be able to say, like create a teeth cell that is better able to fight cancer um, using this method. And they submit these proposals to the government um, and other fun different funding agencies of the government. And they basically say, will you give me money for it? And there are different um, grants that you can get. They fund different things and different amounts. They all have kind of their own little intricacies. But the basic goal is to get money to be able to do the research because science is expensive. It is not cheap to do things that involve like using lots of pipette tips or using lots, lots of flasks or culturing cells and bacteria. All of these are things are really expensive. You know what's also expensive? Paying people to do that work. I may not be making that much but I'm not cheap either. Throughout my time as a grad student, at almost all points, the money that has been paid to me has been coming from the government in some way. So this system is really fundamental to what I think makes science in this country so strong because you're able to keep students in this country to do top science. I think when you're a grad student, because you are, you have that student in your title, people don't realize that you're also doing a job. and. I'm like in this weird but also fortunate position where every day when I wake up and I say I'm going to go to lab or school today, what I'm also saying is that I'm going to work. I'm going to go do my job. And it's a job that I get paid for. I do labor. I am part of a large workforce of people who are doing science in this country. By cutting funding for research, you are cutting funding for jobs that affects the ability of professors to hire postdocs and graduate students and undergrads. There is a whole economy based on the funding that the government gives to universities. And I think there's this idea of like, oh, well, if the government stops giving this funding, you know, maybe private companies will step up and, you know, fill the void. And they probably will. I think there's a lot of incentive for companies to continue sp uh, funding specific types of research in this country. But I think we also need to remember that companies have their own interests and the, the kind of um, research that these companies will fund is not necessarily going to be the type of research that the government funds. Companies have different incentives. The types of things that they want to have more research on are things that they can profit off of later. And that's not bad. I'm not going to bash any company for funding research that directly co like contributes to their, you know, to their growth. That's a natural part of, you know, the research ecosystem. But I think it's important that we make sure that it's not the only part because science Science is so much more vast than that. It's so ingrained in so many different parts of our world that it's not just about the things that you can make and get profit off of. The other thing with government funding that people have been trying to push is using it to incentivize scientists to perform more outreach and to have more diversity in their programs. And you probably wouldn't get that with corporations that are funding research. So when we hear that funding from the NIH is going to go down, it's terrifying. For people like in my position who are trying to look for jobs in the next few years, this is already been a huge factor in the kind of jobs that are available because right now some researchers are really hesitant to take on new scientists as postdocs or grad students because they don't know what the funding situation is like. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You can't do science without money and you can't do science without encouraging the top people from other countries to come here. You just can't. The cuts that he's proposing to the NIH will hopefully not pass because I think, I think enough people in Congress realize that like the NIH is pretty important. Like they need money, you know, so that you you can cure diseases. Because you know, you know who doesn't care if you're a Republican? Cancer. Cancer doesn't give a fuck if you're a Republican or a Democrat. It doesn't care. Anybody can get these diseases, and everybody should be able to get a cure for them. But they can't get that cure if we can't do the research that we need to make that possible. So, <laughs> yeah. So. If you, I like I said, please, please consider um, joining the March for Science if there's one going on near you. I will be at the Boston one. There'll be some great speakers there, so that will be pretty exciting. I'm, I'm anticipating that the Boston one will be pretty big. It should be pretty exciting. So if you are thinking about going, let me know below. If you're not sure and you need some more convincing, definitely let me know because I would be happy to convince you. We really need everybody's help in making sure that we can continue doing really great work in this country. So yeah, thank you for watching and bye.